Welcome everybody, my name is Shoaib Ahmed and this is the Teaching and Learning Academy. Today's video is all about how to improve your exam results in the classroom. doesn't matter what you're teaching, if you're teaching uh, preparation for SATs, uh, 11 plus, GCSEs, BTEC, A levels, it doesn't matter. Today I'm going to share a tool with you that will make revision, uh, assessment for learning and learner voice far more engaging in the classroom. It will create an environment of competitiveness. It will be using technology, which looks great on a lesson plan when you're being observed and looks great in an observation. Um, so all of those things all wrapped into one. Great engagement, use of technology, and um, students actually being competitive in the classroom. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up an account with the website called Kahoot. Now, the first thing that we need to do is we need to open up a browser. This can either be Internet Explorer, uh, Chrome, whatever your preference is. And in the toolbar, we just search for the website called Kahoot. And as you can see, we've got it straight away in front. But there's quite a few options here. We've got enter a pin here and we'll come to that a lot, lot later. But what we're going to do is we're going to click on Kahoot.com here. And go to the web page as you can see this is the Kahoot website now what we're going to do is we're going to create ourselves an account so we click on the sign up page and once we've done that we choose our status whether we're a teacher professional personal whatever we are but for this demonstration and how to use it we're gonna go with the status of teacher and I'm gonna go with the option of I teach in a school once I've done that, this is what you get then. Now, it's important basically for safeguarding and GDPR that we keep our personal email addresses and our work email addresses for websites such as these totally separate. Now, what we need to do is we need to create an account with our work email address. So in this section, we will have our work email address go in and then in this section, we will have, we will make ourselves a password. So once you've done that, the next stage will allow you to log in to create. Now, once we've created our account or logged in with our account, uh, created a password and a username, it will ask you for these questions. So country, uh, wherever you're based around the world. Now I'm based in the United Kingdom, so I'll select United Kingdom and my school name I'll leave maybe for later just for GDPR purposes and as we can see we are all up and running now the next stage that we're going to do is we're going to create an account uh, create a quiz that we will be able to use in our classroom so for example we can go into create which is just here on your right hand side and we're going to make a new Kahoot and there we go now this is where your resources need to kind of be prepared but like I said this is a great interactive tool and um, it's great for learner voice now what we do here is we put our question in so um, I being a teacher from a business background I'm going to um, type a question, what is the purpose of a cash flow forecast? Now once I've done that, as you can see you've got lots of other options on the screen. Now here you have an option to actually personalize and make your uh, quiz question a little bit more creative now you can upload an image so for example if I wanted to go into Internet Explorer and type in cash flow do that click on images and pick something that graphic here we go pick something nice and easy we'll save that image into PC just put it on my desktop for the argument and there we go that's saved now I'll go back into Kahoot and 
upload image that's what I'll select and I've saved that image in the desktop select and open and as you can see the image is there uploaded now here what we have is the time limit that you want to give your students for answering the question the next is how many points they get for answering the question correctly now this one here single select if you've got more than one correct answer then you can go multi select or if you've just got one correct answer you can do single select now I'm just gonna go with single select so the purpose of a cash flow and I'm just gonna give some random answer cash flow forecast is uh, count uh, count how much money you have not got monitor and this is the correct answer monitor the income and expenditure I can remember this word expenditure uh, income, income and expenditure of the business um, and let's go a bit silly find out how much money we can steal and the last one is no use whatsoever there we go so that's done now those four options are key to you being interactive with your students and I'm going to come to that in a little while now once you've done that you scroll down and you see if there are any other options that you want to put in um, depending on the font or if you want to actually put a maths formula in there if you're a maths teacher you can do that now I'm gonna go to the top and I'm gonna select done there we go so the correct answer has not been selected so I've actually missed a step here so I'm gonna go back to the edit I'm gonna select the correct answer which is this one here and it saved it to my drafts and actually let's go with another question let's make two here today let's go add and let's make it a true or false question those are also options you can have true or false you can have a puzzle you can have a poll you can have slides but I'm gonna go with a true or false here so here we go um, H R means human resources and the answers are true in this case won't go as far as doing the image and I'm gonna click on done I am done with my quiz now what I'm gonna call this um, it's gonna ask me for a title I'm gonna call this business quiz number one and I'm not going to go into a description, but you can give it a description and click on continue. And that is now saved into your account. These options later on. I want to show you some more features of this website and the, the amazing uses of it. So I'm going to click on done for now. So as you can see, your, your quiz is now saved here in this section. I've titled mine or business quiz number one now the next thing that I want to show you is the amazing uses of this website and how great it can be in the classroom for revision purposes um, there's so much content here that's been created by other teachers it's absolutely awesome so we're gonna go into the tab which is here on the left hand side of the screen and click on discover and I'm gonna type in subject that I might be teaching let's say chemistry not a chemistry teacher but hey for the argument we can see how much content 
has been created by other teachers. And as you can see, you can judge how good this content and these these quizzes are by the number of plays that they've had. So as you can see here, that's had 98,000 plays or just over 98,000 plays. This one here, 28,000 plays, 32,000 plays. Now, you can see me scrolling down. There is a lot of content already here. Some of these are really, really good. Some of them are really short, as short as 15, for example, and as long as 46. You've got oh, so much here. Um, just for the argument, I'm going to type in another subject and let's move away from the sciences and let's go towards maths. And here we go. Those of you who are maths teachers, algebra, multiplication, fractions, statistics. The list is there for you. Again, you've got questions as few as 10. Um, as you've got, you've got 30 there, a lot of there for 30. Scrolling through this, you can see that you've got questions as few as 10 in a quiz and as many as, let's see what high numbers we can find here. We can go 21, 30. So this can in keep your learners engaged for quite some time in the classroom. If you are looking for a quick 10 minute activity and you want to get an assessment of how the learning is going in the classroom, then this is a great way of you assessing that. And it really does work in the classroom very, very well. I've been, like I said, using it. I've, I've been using it for around three odd years for um, exams related to accounting and other subjects. And um, the students love it. They really lap it up. Um, other things you can also do and go to the home page. You can see what's going on with this company called Kahoot. What's new? What's happening? You can actually create a paid for account, which does give you more features. I've always used the free account, but you can do that. You can go into this Kahoot section here, as you can see. I'm back into my account and what I've created and what I've saved. Reports. This is really, really important. That learner voice that I was talking about, that's where it is. It, once you click into report, you automatically get all the reports for all the quizzes that you've run and this is your learner voice this tells you how well your students have done now I've got 105 reports here so you can see how long I've been um, using this in the classroom now once I click in there for example I get all my questions number of players I've had questions that was there questions that were there the feedback on how well they enjoyed it it even gives you the time which is just here and the date that you played it at so just in case you lose track um, but yeah so as you can see there's a lot here a lot in terms of data um, it tells you how well the students did what how many points they got what rank they were and it, those students were struggling you even get the, the stats for that who didn't finish it automatically identifies who really struggled in the classroom you always get those students who don't put their hand up who don't interact that well and you always wonder whether they're absorbing and are they engaged this tells you straight away so that's the report section you've also got this here called groups so just skip the intro and as you can see you can create groups here this is very much similar to um, a whatsapp group um, that you might have on your smartphone um, and you can use this to share the quizzes that you've um, created and you can actually create quizzes together so this is very very collaborative but there you have it so this is how to you how to create an account with Kahoot it's also how to navigate the basics of Kahoot. It's how to create a quiz using Kahoot. We're just going to go back a couple of steps before I go any further. Something that I forgot to show you was how to actually set 
the timings or the countdown per question when you're devising your quiz because your quizzes uh, the questions might be more challenging than others and therefore the students need to maybe work something out or even discuss in their groups depends how you're playing it out so I just wanted to show you how to set the time so if we just quickly go back into where we actually devise the quiz and that's under your Kahoot's uh, menu and you can see our quiz that we created earlier business quiz number one if you go into edit and then let that load up on the screen and this is your timing um, a time limit per question now if I just click on that you can see you get a whole load of options anything up to uh, you've got four minutes there um, it never used to be that long uh, max you used to get was about 90 seconds um, but now they've increased it now to um, four minutes so you've got five seconds ten seconds etc etc now depending on how challenging the question is you can select appropriately this is also a really good way of you assessing your learners because if you find that there you've given them 30 seconds per question and they're just all flying through each one then you know that their recall is really really good and next time round maybe you can put the countdown timer at 10 seconds or possibly even 5 uh, just to get that quick recall in and maybe the activity will be quick recall uh, 5 seconds per question and you might have 10 questions 15 questions just at the starter of a lesson so it depends how you want to play with it but yes that was something I forgot to uh, show you earlier but there we go now once you've done that uh, I've selected 10 seconds for example and you click on done and we click on done again and there we are back to our Kahoot page of uh, or the Kahoot menu with all our quizzes in it so now what we're going to look at is how to actually practically use this in the classroom so what we're going to do is we're again going to select business quiz number one and then what you do is on the left hand side of the page you come into play now this is the button that will activate uh, the quiz now if I click on play and we're going to click on teach here because we're in the classroom and we're teaching we're not assigning anything the next thing that we need to do here is we need to select classic which is player versus player you want the learners to actually um, play against each other so quickly select on classic and this is where Kahoot will start loading up your uh, your quiz now in the classroom you need to ask the students to either log on to the Kahoot.it website using their smartphones or download the Kahoot app which will be a one-time thing once they've got it on their phone once they've done that it will quickly ask them to build a small profile for themselves it will ask them their age their gender I'll also ask them their role which is a student those three questions need to maybe give everybody um, a couple of minutes to actually log in depending on what the Wi-Fi connections like in your um, in your organization give them a few minutes when you're doing this for the first time so it's either kahoot.it or download the Kahoot app once they've built their small profile which like I said won't take any longer than a few minutes or a couple of minutes they will then be asked to enter a game pin now this is your game pin once the game pin is in there they will be asked for entering a nickname on the website so once they've entered the game pin on their phone and I'm gonna do this live using my smartphone as well so I'm gonna type in and I've downloaded the um, the app onto my smartphone so it's 252662 and once I've entered that it's asked me for a nickname I'm just gonna put my name in and the second I en enter that in it's totally interactive as you can see on my screen my name is up on there now what I always would advise any teacher is learners will always be a little bit cheeky so I always say to them when they're choosing a nickname it's nothing offensive it's nothing uh, bordering on um, being rude uh, things like that because learners will always um, you know 
always try to push their boundaries. Now, once we're, once we're in, all you've got to do as a teacher is hit the start button. And what you'll get on your screen or your classroom projector, and this is what the learners will also see, is the question first. You've got the timings there and you've got all the options. Now, I'm going to run out of time here on purpose. Nobody answered the question. You can see nobody got anything right. Well, it's just me playing here anyway. So I didn't obviously answer the question. So it's telling me there we go. Now, the next thing I am actually going to answer, answer the next question. And what I'd like to show you and describe to you is what the learners will see. Now, here we go. It's a true or false question that we've put together. Now, on the learner's smartphones or the student's smartphones, all they will see are the two colours with the symbols. That's all they'll see. So it's very, very important that they're able to see their proje your classroom projector in the classroom. And, you know, you might want to adjust your seating plan to do so. So let's just quickly answer this question. Last moment or try to. Oh, I didn't even click on it in, cl in good time. But there you go. Now... Even though I didn't answer a single question correctly and I was the only person playing, it still allocated me first place by the looks of it on my um, screen. And the learners will all get that feed on their smartphone. They'll be able to see how many questions they've got right, what position they're in, how many questions they've answered in a row correctly. So it's totally interactive for them on their screen. Let's just click on next. You can, you can see here, you've got this few, view full report. So if I click on that, for example, and you don't want to show this to your learners, um, you want to do this privately, uh, you might want to change, uh, take the projector off the screen. And here we go, it shows you how many players, uh, how much time was spent on the quiz, um, who got how many questions right, who didn't finish, all of these reports are there for you instantly. So there you have it, everybody. This is how to improve your exam results in the classroom. I've been using this tool for about three to four years now, and I found it very, very useful on all three counts, uh, which I mentioned earlier, not only for revision techniques for exams, but also for assessment for learning and for learner voice. The other thing to bear in mind with Kahoot, you don't only need smartphones in the classroom. You might be in a secondary school setting. You might be in a primary school setting teaching IT. Now, this is totally playable on PCs. Again, all the learners need to do is once you've activated it on your projector, if I just show you once again, once you've gone into your question bank or your quiz bank on the Kahoot's menu and you select the quiz, and once it's loaded up, there we go. And once you hit on play and teach, the learners, if you've got PCs in the classroom, they simply do the same thing as they did on the smartphone. They either, uh, the, well, they don't download the app on their PCs. They go onto this website called kahoot.it and it will do the same thing, ask them for a brief profile and they can actually play on their computer screens using the, um, the keyboard and the mouse. So this is not exclusive to smartphones. You can use this in an IT-based classroom. So there you have it, everybody. That is Kahoot, the teacher's edition. Um, if you want to, if you have kids at home and you want to make revision more fun with them, I'll also be doing one for learners or students, uh, how, for, how they can use their revision notes and make them far more enjoyable when they're revising. We're living in a time where learners are constantly being notified by things on their phone. They've got Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, WhatsApp. Um, and when they've got all of this, all of these notifications coming in and they're being bombarded and they're multitasking on their phones, when you simply give them a quiz on paper, it can be a little bit boring for them. And it's the same if you've got kids, kids at home. If they're finding the whole idea of just revising from their notes a little bit boring, there will be a video of how to make revision for learners or for students far more interactive and them actually taking charge of their revision using um, recall. So there you have it, everybody. That is Kahoot. 
If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and you'll receive notifications for weekly content ahead. See you next week, everybody. Take care. Stay safe.